Good evening, everyone. How's it going out there? Welcome back here to a Thursday night, Friday, just around the corner here. So sit tight. Uh, yeah, the weekend's almost upon us. January 8th, 2026, a date, 10, 12 p.m. That's California time here. Uh, latest activity on the earthquake 3D globe shows a 3.8 across the Japan area, right in that mega quake warned area. Also some movement on the backside there of Japan with a 3.2. Uh, looking at the USGS map shows this is awfully quiet right now. Uh, maybe starting to see a sign here with the latest 3.8 in terms of uh, maybe some elevated earthquake uptick here happening soon. Most of the movement, as you can see here on the globe, uh, New Zealand was popping here this morning with a five-pointer. Pretty decent sized earthquake down there. Uh, with a sw uh, Not a swarm, but a little bit of aftershock sequences going on there as well. Um, South America definitely kicking up here uh, about Peru area southward into the Chile region. Just a swarm of earthquake activity. That's one of our more more notable areas of uptick here today. Uh, also around the Mediterranean seeing a, a pretty decent amount of twos and threes out there all over the place. Remember when things are uh, on the uptick like this, we'd need to be prepared for some larger movement. Let's go ahead and check out uh, California, see what's going on. Offshore, looks like a little earthquake here, a little 2.3. Been getting, uh, getting a little bit of activity offshore here recently. Of course, as the Pacific plate here grinds up against the North American plate, we do see these faults here get active offshore. And a number of those can produce some big earthquakes. It's been relatively quiet out here across the San Diego area recently, but um, you know, history uh, has shown that uh, we can get some decent sized quakes. As uh, far as Southern California goes, really nothing above 2.5. Uh, all small microquake activity out here for now. Uh, really nothing of any abnormal activity. Uh, same for the Ridgecrest area, just a couple smaller quakes up there. The Bay Area of San Francisco. Uh, when was this quake? Uh, fairly recent, a one-pointer on the Hayward Fault. Nothing big. Earlier this morning, we had a 4.2 out there on the... Uh, well, it's not on a fault system, but it's technically in a uh, hydrothermal field, Clear Lake Volcanic Field. Uh, these are geothermal operations out there that produce the uh, earthquakes. And there's a little bit of uptick going on there. Uh, aside from that, Northern California, pretty quiet. Up into Washington, a handful of smaller quakes. Uh, the trimmer map this evening shows that we got a little bit of uptick going on there north here into the northern end of the Cascadia. 159 epicenters of tremor. That's low slip events there into the deeper area of the Cascadia subduction zone. So I don't see any uh, earthquake activity happening up there, but got to remember the strain uh, definitely building up there across the locked area of the Cascadia. The more tremor activity we see across the entirety of the Cascadia, uh, the more likely that we'll see a full rupture out here as uh, far as the next go around goes. And, and our last event was back in 1700. So a lot of stress has been building up out here, folks. Uh, let's see what else we got. Nothing major for Yellowstone. A couple earthquakes across the oil fields. Uh, Louisiana as well. Nothing going on across the eastern portion of the country. Quick glance here at the Big Island of Hawaii. Number of earthquakes all across the area there. It's been uh, you know, way more amplified than what we've seen here uh, in the last year. I do want to double check the Kilauea volcano status. See where we're at as far as the inflation data goes. We should be getting close here to another eruption, right? Uh, I'm thinking around the 10th or so. Here in about two days, we should be seeing a return of episode 40. The first eruption of 2006 or 2026 i was gonna say 2016 wow go back 10 years i don't know if that'd be a good or bad thing but uh regardless here we got the uh, inflation chart showing that we're just about uh to a level scene where we were at in episode 39 so we're getting close here folks uh far as the next eruption goes we'll double check the webcams out here see what's glowing out in the nighttime hawaii skies uh, or surface area. Let's see what we got here. Oh wow! Looks like a little bit of a uh, little bit of activity. Almost looks like it's thrown up some uh, 
some lava there. Maybe getting close. There's some overfill, overspill going on there. So I want to check back on that at the end of this update video. Getting close. Uh, let's see. Any uh, major activity following that five pointer down in New Zealand? Nothing really. There's a, a couple smaller quakes out there, but nothing of any uh, sizable events. Uh, still quiet around the Papua New Guinea area eastward, about to the uh, Vanuatu region. This area has been awfully quiet, a little concerning there. Uh, and there's that uh, moderate, deep activity there underneath the Tajikistan or Tahikistan. Take your pick. I can never get that right. Is it Tajikistan? Tajikistan. I think it's T Tajikistan. One of the two. Correct me if I'm wrong. But two 5.3s out there. Uh, occurring there and it looks like a couple other earthquakes as well all right uh, let's see what we got here for space weather activity just going to kind of keep this short and sweet man look at that we dropped off after seeing a couple c flares here and a long duration c flare we just flatlined down there to the b flare category b 6.5 how low can we say solar minimum that's uh some Pretty low activity. Uh, nothing major for the Aurora activity. We're expecting maybe a little bit of solar wind stream from that really weak coronal hole. I, I'm not impressed with it at all, folks. I've seen there's been a lot bigger ones, you know. This does have some length for it, but this was not impressive whatsoever. A lot of people making a big deal out of it, and it's really not that big of a deal. Um, Let's take a look here at the uh, magnetogram image of the sunspots here. Uh, the one we're kind of watching there is 4334 and back over here as well, 4336. Latest image imagery, oh man, this one kind of, this one died off really quick here. So it looks like that. that's why we're seeing a little dump there in terms of the uh, solar x-ray X -ray chart. Um, let's see what this one's doing. Well, this eh, kind of just stable here. I'm really not seeing any major growth there within that sunspot area. Uh, we may we may see these just completely fade away. I mean, you kind of think about you got to think about this here when you see the X-ray flux chart take a nosedive like that with no popcorn type sizzling, or I like to call it fajitas, on a you know a, a platter there that you order at a Mexican restaurant. It's just flatlined. There's no instability going on. That tells me there that things are dying off. So those sunspots there may not be of any uh, worthy mentioning here for the uh, foreseeable future, unless something changes. But uh, the Aurora forecast here, as I mentioned, you know they've been flip flopping on the G1, G2 class storm category. Uh, this is for tonight, but you know I, I called this here. I, I call it like I see it, and this is a really high northward pointing coronal hole, coronal hole, and there's really no sufficient coverage for it. Yes, it's got you know an area up north here and really weak areas that we were looking at. It's really not all that impressive, so we're really not going to see anything in terms of major aurora activity. Um, a look at the data here shows that uh, the speed has definitely kicked up here in the last couple runs up above 450 or so um well, like i say it uh, i i don't know a, a g1 class storm possible tonight but i don't think i don't think it's likely uh glance here at the severe weather center storm prediction center i should say uh, this is for tomorrow, folks, for Friday. Got some Friday severe weather events down there across the south. I know they need some rain, but hey, um, yeah, they're going to get it. But it comes along with a the cost there. It looks like some severe weather potential in all hazards from tornado, wind, and hail potential there for your Friday. So just a heads up there. Got uh, some definitely uh, wintertime severe weather there from that map. Massive low pressure system up around the Great Lakes area right now, but that's going to pull in a lot of moisture, create that convection down south there in the uh, 
Uh, just you know, just be on guard, folks. There's uh, some severe weather in Oklahoma and Kansas uh, earlier this morning, so just be weary. Just pay attention out there. Man, look at the forecast here for California. I'm glad we got. I'm glad we got 10 inches of rain here in the last three weeks because the rest of January looks super dry. Not a drop of rain here. That is scary. Hopefully, that's not going to be the. Um, look at that. If we hadn't got the 10 inches of rain and we continued with this dry forecast, oh, we would be in big time trouble uh, for our water year out here. So uh, we're, we've are we been pretty fortunate here to see sufficient rain out here across the, the entire state of California. Southern California majorly included in that. Uh, but this does not look good there. Massive dominant high pressure out here across the Pacific uh, Eastern Pacific here across the West Coast. So, yikes. I'm hoping February and March change here because two weeks, you know, that's a good time to dry out, right? But we don't need two months of dry weather because after that, it's 100 degrees or so, you know, when it comes to April, May, June, or July out here. Um, hopefully that comes uh, comes back here. All right, uh, let's see what else is going on here. Seismograph stations, pretty quiet there across the board, folks. Not a whole lot going on. Um, just keep an eye out here across the Western Pacific. It's quiet for now, but we may be seeing some signs here of some happenings, right? With the latest quake of 3.8 up there. Just be on guard. 2026, you know, nobody knows what it's going to bring. It could bring some surprises out here. Have a good one. We'll see you guys out here for the Friday morning update.